Guys, I did it. The sandbagging reputation can now be lifted. The days of just winning race after race and piling up trophy after trophy is now over. Just feeling like this guy every single day of the week, all gone because I am a Category 3 bike racer. So my upgrade points, they were pretty close to being forced to upgrade. Um, I probably could have got away with a few more races without upgrading, but figured since everybody was calling me out for being a sandbagger, I may as well do it on my own terms. Uh, but this is my first race as an upgraded Cat 3 rider. This is the 3-4 race. And then after this race, um, I got to race in the P1-2-3 race, which was cool. All right, let's talk about something called Catch and Counter. St. Al's, they had five or six riders in this race, and that's what they did the entire race. So right here, you got a St. Al's rider in front of me. You got Brian up the road. They catch him, and then this rider just goes right off the front. He puts in a little dig and this strings out the the whole field typically you either catch the break and then send another rider up or like this guy did he just went right off of the front and uh encountered right when he caught the uh the breakaway rider all right here's another really great example the field's all back together if you look in the rear cam come around this corner another saying all guys just takes a flyer and the guy that i'm following he just lets up big time i mean you can tell he's not trying at all and he lets that gap open up and uh, it looks like Wally right there goes and chases that down. So, I mean, with St. Niles being the most represented team, they kind of were able to control the front of this race. Uh, Bob's, they had two or three. I actually didn't wear my Bob's kit today. I thought it might be kind of fun to just chase anything down that I wanted to instead of thinking in the back of my head, oh, I don't want to chase that down. That guy's wearing the same kit as me. So, um, anyways... When that happened, I kind of fell back, let someone else chase that down. You can see him up the road here. Um, and I just figured I better just recover best I can because this is going to happen the entire race and I need to be ready to either bridge up or go with a move. A bit later, that move uh, gets up the road a bit and these guys bridge up. So I uh, grab this wheel to uh, see if I can get a free ride. It was still really early in the race, so I wanted to conserve my energy. I'm gonna speed it up here. So what I did is I just basically surfed a few people's wheels um, as they tried to bridge up to the break. And um, after, I think, two laps, we ended up uh, catching these guys. Um, and I was able to do that with a little less energy than a lot of people used. And then, like I said, catch and counter was the name of the game here. Brian takes a flyer as the group comes back together at a really good moment. He's able to take the best line through the chicane section and a lot of other riders might have to slow down. So he gets a bit of a gap and then you can see right there, um, a St. Al's rider goes with him. Greg's on the front, so he kind of sits up, doesn't put in a huge effort. Going back to the comment I made earlier, I didn't wear my Bob's kit today and Brian, a Bob's rider is up the road along with two St. Al's riders. And I throw this flyer out um, the group was kind of slowing down and it was in the tailwind section and get a decent gap and come through. I look behind me and David, another St. Al's rider, um, bridges up to me as well. And this is the surprising part. I figured he would just sit on my wheel, but he actually comes through and, uh, and starts pulling, which was awesome. Um, cause I was already feeling it just from putting in that little effort and, um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly why he did that with his teammates up the road, but I wasn't going to complain. So we do end up bridging up here, come around this corner. That St. Al's rider got a glimpse of me in the corner of his eye, turned around and realized that we'd bridged up. And so he just lets up and uh, wants me to fill in this uh, gap here. And I wasn't super motivated to do this. I mean, three St. Al's riders versus me and Brian, I didn't really like those odds a whole lot. Um, and could kind of tell everybody kind of started slowing down right here. Brian actually pulls off and kind of gets a gauge on what, what people are going to be willing to do. And, uh, I think I kind of realized that this wasn't going to go anywhere. I'm a broken record by this point, but you see right there, another St. Al's rider takes a flyer off the front when everything comes together. Another catch and counter. Once again, the group comes back together. And then if you look on the left there, 
another catch and counter. Got a St. Al's and a Bob's rider going up the road. So the whole point of this tactic is to basically wear down the field. I mean, previously I was kind of up in the front and I would go with a lot of these moves. Now we're, I don't know, maybe halfway through the race and I'm getting tired and I can't go with every single move. But uh, the St. Al's guys, they have, like I said, five or six guys. And so they just keep sending another guy up the road, another guy up the road, knowing that eventually one of these brakes is going to stick. The brakes still up the road. And right here, this guy in front of me, he puts in an effort and I grab his wheel and try to get a free ride up to bridge the breakaway. I mean, every week it seems like once there's once we're partway through the race, about halfway through the race, and it's a Bob's and St. Al's rider off the front in a breakaway, then the race is kind of over. It's the race for third at that point. Um, you see this guy, he, he's waving me on. I don't have it in me to, to pull. Um, I was hoping for a free ride. And in the same time, I looked behind me, realized there's a St. Al's guy on our wheel and didn't really think this was going to go anywhere. He wasn't going to work for sure. And so I figured I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to work just him and I, um, same thing right there. He waves us on again. I just pull off cause I knew the St. Al's guy wasn't going to do anything with the break up the road. So to add it, insult to injury, there it is again, catching counter Chris and the red ends up going with that. And to be honest, I mean, I, I thought the race for third was already on at this point, but with those guys going up the road, I figured maybe I can catch a free wheel and go with it. And to be honest, I ended up putting in a lot more energy than I wanted to. I go over a thousand watts to uh, bridge up to this. And like I said, the, the other brakes already up the road. So this group here is basically racing for third at this point. So St. Al's rider catching counter. And then Chris follows that. I end up bridging up with a few other St. Al's guys. And then we come through right here. Everybody realizes that it's probably not going anywhere. And what do you know? Another catch encounter by St. Al's. And so I guess at that point, maybe he was thinking, hey, these guys are gas. They just put in a big effort and maybe he can secure third. The only problem with that is my ego won't let that happen. Even though I'm really tired, I decide that I better go with that move. I mean, there's what, three St. Al's riders around me. I knew that they weren't going to do anything to chase that down. I was on the front and uh, I figured if I don't go now, this that he's definitely going to stay away. So put in this big effort here. And about a lap later, he looks back, realizes that I'm close and he just sits up and starts soft pedaling. I do the same knowing that uh, this thing's going to come back together and the field just goes flying by me which wasn't a big deal. I ended up catching onto the back here. And the biggest thing for me is I just wanted to recover as best I could before the final sprint. And so I guess mission accomplished. It's all back together. And uh, I guess this is gonna be the race for third at this point. After bridging up, um, I've been sitting kind of near the back, just recovering best I could. So for the final lap, it was time to move up. And I start doing that here right when we go past the start finish. The guys up the road there, they're still part of this group that's still racing for third. They were kind of taking a long bomb, um, but couldn't stay away. We end up catching them right here. Um, the guy in the American flag socks in front of us here, he'd been sitting near the back and I knew he had a decent sprint. So he was the wheel that I wanted to follow going into the final straight. And then if you look on my wheel, uh, there's a St. Al's rider. So coming into the last straight, it's basically American so American Flag Socks, the St. Al's rider, and I that are racing for third. We all light up our sprints and didn't have enough in the tank. I should have sat on this guy's wheel a little bit longer. But out of the three of us, uh, both those guys end up uh, beating me. So I think I got fifth. Now that I've upgraded to category three, it means that I can jump into the last race of the night for the P123s. Yes, guys, the P stands for professional. So basically, by association, I'm now a professional cyclist. You do have some heavy hitters in this race. You got the typical Bob's and St. Al's guys, but then you got some legit pros as well. Here in the uh, rear cam, you see there's a Team Cliff Bar rider. There's another two guys that typically race uh, on Tuesday nights, but they also race the USA 
crit series, so I think they're out of town. So then you got Team Mercedes Benz. And don't fact check me on this, but when you make the team, you actually get a brand new Mercedes, which is dope for them, but it's always a little embarrassing for us. We come to the races and they're like, oh, look, I just pulled up in my new Mercedes Benz. How did you get here? And I'm like, oh, my mom dropped me off in her minivan. And so it's a little embarrassing, but whatever. The one thing that I immediately noticed with this race compared to the 3-4 race is just the speed. I mean, we're going into the headwind section right here, and we're going 31 miles an hour. I mean, in our other races, we would probably be going like 26, 27. And so just the speed of this race is going to be a lot faster, and I kind of figured that. My plan was just to sit on. I mean, worst case scenario, um, I get dropped and I have to pull out, but uh, wanted to give it a try. So starting out felt pretty good. We got my pain meter here in the corner and more than anything, just wanted to sit on and conserve as much energy as I could and see how long I could last. It didn't take too much time before my pain meter started increasing. Little gaps would open and, and uh, more than anything, just wanted to make sure that I was connected to the main group and not being threatened uh, of getting dropped too early. Besides the speed of this race compared to the other ones, the other issue that I had um, already fatigued is when anybody would throw an attack, you can see one right here, everybody starts chasing it and it gets really strung out and then gaps open up and I'm just trying my best just to hang on. And it was in these times that I literally thought, okay, I'm gonna give it one more lap and I'm gonna pull out because I was so tired and the pain meter just kept creeping up. So I was definitely feeling it at this point, didn't know how much I had left in the tank. Um, a surge happens and a few of us off the back, a gap opens up and we have to close it down. And to be honest, I don't know, I, at this point of, in the race, I really thought I'd just be off to the side watching um, from the sideline. But uh, we end up bridging up and what was happening is someone would put in kind of a flyer, everybody would chase it down, and so it just became super surgy. So, I mean, as long as you could hang on to just those few seconds of surge, you could stay with that front group. And so you can see here, a lot of the a lot of these guys aren't even pedaling through these corners um, just because, I mean, it was just a surge and then it slowed down again. All right, this is the last one right here. I'm on Brian's wheel, wasn't really paying attention. A surge went up the road and we kind of missed it. So there's five or six riders back here and I decided to put in this dig to kind of stitch it up. And I'm actually gonna, uh, I'll speed it up here, but um, it took about a, a lap to get this all back together. And I probably should have let someone else do this, but whatever. Um, on my wheel, you got Nick, St. Al's rider. All right, so watch this uh, Mercedes rider off to the right there, and then Nick in the rear cam. He just pulls off. He sees the Mercedes guy make that move. Nick jumps on the wheel and goes with it, and they come from behind the front of the group now, and so I just think they had just enough of uh, kind of a difference in speed to where they were able to get a decent gap before the rest of the field could react. And that is the winning move of the race, actually. They end up staying away. So once again, with that break up the road, the rest of this race is a race for third amongst, I mean, everybody left in the field. Um, a, a bunch of people got shelled, and I think there's probably six or seven of us left racing for third. Um, my battery died, so I don't have the finish. But I mean, after that break went up the road, everything kind of settled down. There wasn't as much surging and I was able to hang on till the very end. Uh, came around the corner for that final sprint, stood up and actually snapped a spoke. So uh, that sound of that spoke snapping made me sit back down and take it easy. But to be honest, I don't think I had it in the tank to come around anybody anyway. So I think I maybe passed one of these guys. So maybe got like seventh. With this being my first P123 race and just racing the 4-5 race before this, I will take this result as a moral victory. And I kind of feel like I might be taking a lot of those for the first little bit of being a Cat 3 racer, especially when doing road races. Not the skinniest dude, so we'll see how that goes. 
Anyways, next race that I hope to get some footage on and do a video is called Lodija. It's Logan, Utah to Jackson, Wyoming. It's a little over 200 miles with three major climbs that kind of determine the outcome of the race. Um, it's been marked on my calendar since, I mean, last year when I did it for the first time. I've been training with Team Real for the last few months, uh, kind of specifically for that race really dialing in our kind of training over the last couple of months really excited for it i mean it's going to be a hectic day so hope to mount a camera and get at least a portion of it but we'll have to see um, we'll probably stop at two aid stations my wife's going to be there supporting me so we'll see if we can make it all work but really excited for that one and that'll probably be my next video hopefully take care